Hey guys, Elizabeth here, Dandy Soap Channel, and today we're going to do our St. Patty's. And I have an assortment of different things I've gotten from the Dollar Tree. And I absolutely love these top hats. You guys know I love top hats. These have clovers. This one actually has the word lucky on it. And then I have this one. So we're going to do a different assortment and array of all my St. Patty's. And I'm going to try to do all this in one video. And I'm actually going to use this stocking that I got some years ago. I didn't see any green Christmas stockings, but this is actually going to be my gnome. I'm going to make a little gnome, but I have an assortment of different things all the way to the scarf. And so I'm going to clear this off and we're going to get started. The first thing I'm going to do, guys, is right here on this stocking, I'm just going to cut this lower part off because that's going to basically be my gnome. Now, we since this is being done with this stocking, as you know, we're going to be working on the side versus the top. So it's just a little bit different. And also, this is going to be his beard. If you go right here, I've already broken the string just so you can see how easy it is. And if you just pull that stitch and pop it, it will actually separate because it will guard the integrity of that fur and you don't have all that fur all over the place and making a mess now i'm taking a few handfuls of these pebbles that i got at dollar tree to put weight in the bottom and what that does is that really helps weigh him down and it also will allow you to be able to establish a little bit better shape uh, so that your gnome will kind of hold his form a little bit better so i went ahead and i put some rice in there and because I need to close up this gap a little bit, I'm going to go ahead and put some hot glue. Now, when you go to put your polyfill in, guys, make sure that if you're using stuffing or polyfill from an old pillow or fabric scraps, whatever you may, make sure that you pull that polyfill loose. And that way it fluffs up before you go to putting it into your sock to make your gnome. Now I have this glitter tool from Christmas as well. And I'm going to use that because I'm using a golf ball and I do not want my gnome, these dents in the ball, I don't want them to show up too much because I don't want him to look like an old man per se that's had a bad acne problem or dimpled nose. So at this point, I want to put my nose on. And he's going to be a fairly tall gnome, as you can see. And... Anytime that you're going to make a hat that it's not a sock, because the sock is stretchable, so it'll stretch over it. So here's the coolest thing. Just make sure that it's at least his height or double his height, depending on which way you're going. Like the width of this scarf that I'm using from Dollar Tree is more than his height. So I can go either this way and make him a shorter hat, or I can make him a more long hat. But I need to make sure that it's at least one and a time, one and a half times his height. I'm going to show you guys a little trick about making his hat kind of go up. I have a paper towel cardboard and I'm going to roughly just cut it in half because I'm not going to need this entire piece. That board. And if I want to, I can glue that directly to my fat or glue my fabric around that. Just so you guys can see what I'm doing is back here in the back. See this area right here, guys? That's how I want to do it. I just want the, the cardboard to kind of crisscross. 
So I'm actually going to crisscross it. And that will help it to go outward and come upward. So that when it's here, like this, you guys get the gist, I'm sure. And adjustments and you guys can do the same <music> Now I'm working with my wizard. I'm making him a wizard gnome. I've added some coins on his head as a headband because he is the lucky clover wizard. And I'm going to make him my white clover wizard. So I took a bell from off of the Valentine's. I took this, guys, from out of these hats that they had at Dollar Tree. And I'm actually going to put it back here at his bell, I believe. I'm going to glue that clover right there but you guys were pretty much done with him and he looks kind of cute i'll give y'all some better pictures at the end of the video so you can see him real good he is just adorable so we're done with our wizard and we move on to our next project he's my white clover wizard and uh he just he just looks awesome so let me flash him for you you know shaped my hat the way that i wanted it that way you can see how you can make a wizard, or a gnome rather, without having, you know, if you don't have a sock and you just have leftover pieces. Now at Christmas for our next project, I had gotten this bucket from the Dollar Tree, and it had the Santa Claus on it. So I'm actually going to pop this holly off of here. And it is kind of fused on there where they welded that one into place. And you can just twist and turn it and it'll come off. It's not even sharp there. It just come right off. I'm going to paint this with the fern green chalk paint. You always pre-moisten your brush before you get started. And that just gives you a more even coat. Okay, guys, <clears throat> I'm going to use my black paint marker to straighten up my line here. And then I'm actually going to put some varnish over top of this chalk paint. And that chalk paint will powder a lot of times whenever you're dealing with chalk paints. It just powders. Now, at Christmas time, they had this garland, and sometimes you can still find it in Dollar Tree if they get their stock built back up. I got this at uh, Walmart, so I'm just going to use one of these to make us a Lucky Tree Topiary. I also have the wooden dowels from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to be using one of those. And in my bucket, I am repurposing 
some styrofoam that I had back at Christmas where I had done my little red truck. I'm going to paint this white. So in the meantime, just letting you guys know what I'm up to. So now I'm going to varnish this and I'll be right back. So while the paint is drying on the bucket and the wooden dowel is drying, I'm going to go ahead and wrap my styrofoam ball with this garland. And because it has a wire in it, it's going to be real easy to get this wound onto the ball. And usually what I do is I will get here to the top again. And I'll just basically put me a little bit of glue to secure my vine or my garland into place. And that just helps making this winding process a lot smoother. That way I can make sure it's good and snug. And then I just start winding it. And you just want to wrap it until you get your ball covered. And I do a crisscross method. If you guys can see, I bring it to one, on one side and then over to the other. That way it keeps traveling and it'll cover that ball pretty good. And yes, it's showing a little bit of white, but I'm really not worried about that because if you go through there and fluff it up, and by the time you add all your stuff on there, it's not going to be noticed. Now, I've got my bucket here, and I will actually be covering all of this up with some greenery. So, I'm going to put, I'm going to figure out which way my ball looks the best to me. And since it seems to be more white showing here, that's where I will put my dowel. And I'm going to put some glue there. And on that right there, guys, I don't really worry about it, but if it's a, if it's a bothersome for you, um, you can use green paint or you can use a marker like I'm doing and a lot of times it goes totally unnoticed people don't even note that you just colored it in with a marker because a lot of times black will look green looking after it's dried and sit there for a moment so I'm just covering that up with a little bit of black marker and then I will fill that in I will take my hot glue gun and I will fill those dips in with hot glue and you really honestly will not even pay it any difference. that looking guys okay that looks pretty good all right so that's the end of our second project we're going to move to project number three so that looks pretty good i got my hat on there and i got my lucky and i got my coins and by the way guys i went back and i kind of did some spotting of a darker paint just to give it some definition that other green just wasn't looking that good so when i went and i varnished it i actually added some deeper green patches on there just to give it a little more definition and it actually made it look a lot better and improved the looks of it so on to project number three now guys i went ahead and i used my paint marker and did these puffed letters white. So we'll see how that turns out. And the clovers are drying. And then I have this sign that I had also gotten. And of course, I'm going to paint the pot black. Now I'm using the Metallic Inca Gold by Folk Art. 
And I am putting that on there just in case something, just in case, you know, not every single part covers that background. And they'll give it a golden hue in the background. If you wanted to, now that you got gold on your brush, you kind of go over your pot. Just kind of give it a dry brush and whatever's left on that paintbrush. All right, now I know I'm going to put the Happy St. Patty's Day in the middle of that pot. So I'm going to go ahead and put my glue onto this sign and get it glued down. Okay. Now, as a change of venue, to make things look different, I'm going to make it look like my little leprechaun has dove into the pot. So I'm actually going to glue the legs over here and the hat on this side. I'm going to put the hat in the front and I'm going to put the legs in the back. And I had entertained, I've got that painted gold, but it turned out so good that now I'm thinking just put a few of these coins about here and just kind of scatter them out. All right, guys. We've completed our third project. We have our Happy St. Patty's Day in the center of our black pot. We've got our gold coins glued on, our legs and our hat, and I even included the hanger. That's the ribbon that had these all strung together, and I'm just using repurposing it, so I glued it onto the back. All right, so that's the end of project number three for our Happy St. Patty's Day. Now, they had this wooden clover sign, and I have tried to see if I could take it apart, and I can. This ribbon piece is fastened to the middle, so I popped it loose, and then I took scissors, and I cut those clovers apart because I want to use these clovers, and I want to use this whole sign in a different way. So, as you can see... I'm cutting these clovers off. Now I have this folk art paint that is shamrock. And I believe that's what I'm going to use on these clovers. Now with the clovers that I painted, I did five. So I wanted to put the word Irish on these clovers. And I did these in white. So I'm going to put my... And I made sure that my very first clover and my last clover looked the best because they, Harvard did a study, and those are the ones that people, you got to make sure it's correct. And it look, you always try to make sure it looks the best because that's what the eyes are going to draw to first. Now, I have this floral wire that I had gotten from Dollar Tree, guys, and it is green, and it Something told me to get it, and I'm glad that I did. This is a more heavier gauge wire, and it's about six feet long. And if it works out the way I want to, back uh, during, right before Valentine's, when I was doing the Valentine's crafts, I had made a box out of the love word, and I did it with chicken wire. And let me kind of give you guys a flash of it. This is the one that I'm speaking of. The love box, as I call it. And I have put the lavender and the monkey grass in here. And I put a box inside that holds this up. So it looks really pretty. So what I'm going to do is I want to create my word iris, Irish on this wire. And I want to put this hat atop of it. So what I want to do is I want my word to... And this bends real easy, guys. I mean, it is just like super flex. But it's... You know, it stands up. So I, I kind of want my Irish to kind of like a S almost. And so I just need to determine how much 
of this wire I'm going to need. Okay guys, here we are at the end of our DIYs. We have a total of four projects and here we have our Irish on the wire coming up from out of our planter box with his top hat. Additionally, we have our sign and this will be hung on the door and we can see our little leprechaun has dove into the pot of gold. And then as we come down here, <clears throat> We can see that aside our planter Irish, we have our white clover gnome. And he just looks so handsome with his little bell and his white clover. So guys, we're at the end of our DIY for today. I thank you for coming along. Thank you so much. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, I certainly hope that you will. Please hit the thumbs up and give me a like if you are already a subscriber. And if you're a new subscriber, welcome. And I hope that you find some creativity here or explore this and create something of your own. Please take a shot of it, snap a photo, and tag me on Instagram. You'll find all the contact information in the comment box below. Please hit that subscribe button. I certainly appreciate it. And hit the thumbs up. And if you haven't joined the Dandy Soap DIY gang already, you'll find the link down below. If you're interested in making you a planter box, such as this love planter box, you'll find that I've placed the link in the description box below to take you straight to that video. So repurpose all of your Christmas items and different things along the way that you've bought and maybe you didn't get to create the idea that you had in mind. I certainly like to see any projects you're working on. Until the next DIY, you guys have a wonderfully dandily crafty day. This is Elizabeth saying to the next DIY. Over and out. Bye, guys.